this sense of the connection of our consciousness with a vastly greater consciousness is not a theory for people who've had this experience, it's an experience. Um, I've had such experiences myself. Um, I'm a practicing Christian. Um, and one reason I am is that I've actually had direct experiences that make the idea of a consciousness beyond our own, not just a theory, a proposition in theology, but an, ex an actual experience I've had, which for me was very convincing. Now, I know that um, atheists and materialists will say, well, this is just uh, the release of dopamine in the brain or something like that, or yeah. short circuiting various bits of the brain, um, and that it's all inside the head. But the fact is, when you have these experiences, um, you're working on the basis of experience. I mean, science is supposed to be empirical, which means experience. This is experience. And to oppose it, you don't oppose it with materialist science, with experience, you oppose it with ideology. The ideology that the mind is nothing but the brain. Now, I think that the limitations of that ideology are very clear to anyone who's had mystical experiences. Um, and increasing numbers of people are having them, partly because of the spread of psychedelics, which for many people are a kind of rite of passage into a larger view of consciousness. They certainly were for me when I first took psychedelics. And, 1971 or something like that. Before that, I was an atheist, a standard materialist atheist. It went with my scientific education. And they helped open my mind to new possibilities. And I later took up meditation and yoga because I wanted to explore the realm of consciousness without drugs. I mean, not against drugs, but I'm not saying they're necessary. But for many people, they're an opening, a, 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 an opening to this realm of experience. Given that human beings have had these experiences over millennia, given that they underlie the enlightenment of the Buddha, it was a direct experience. Jesus' experience of his own closeness to God was not as a result of doing a PhD or going to a rabbinical seminary. It was a direct experience. And these kinds of experiences are not going to go away. And for those who've had them, um, they're extremely meaningful. They're more meaningful than reading books on popular science or people trying to explain away near-death experiences in terms of anoxia in the brain and that kind of thing. And I think that they're likely, uh, therefore, to lead to a persistent uh, interest in spiritual practices and that these spiritual practices are likely to uh, lead to a resurgence of connection with religious traditions because if they're just free-floating, they're not rooted in a tradition and they're not rooted in a community. And we religions provide many things for people, uh, but they also they provide a sense of interconnection in community with other people in a way that fragmented individualism doesn't. Um, so uh, my own view is that it's very likely that religions will evolve. They are evolving before our very eyes at the moment. Um, and that, um, that, that many people will find them of value. My reply to that idea that religions are based on an extra intense, deep, no irony intended here, direct experience. But correct me if I'm wrong. I read some texts by, as already mentioned, it, I think by so-called neurotheologists who claim that uh, and I read then theologists' responses to them. Neurotheologists claim that by doing, don't ask me what, certain things to your brain, they can trigger something that you experience precisely as this uh, intense religious experience. And it's interesting, what is the theologist's answer to them? Because here, this seems like a good proof, you know, nothing to do with your inner life. I do it to you in a certain way, and you will have that type of experience. But all the experiences that you, and I loved your presentations, Rupert, that you mentioned, you know, like uh, Buddha's enlightenment. Well, I'm sorry. Buddha's enlightenment for original Buddhism itself was not in any sense a religious experience. It was simply an experience of true nature, of reality, of the ultimate void, and so on and so on. Christian experience. My God, I'm fascinated by it, but for me, and I agree here with 
ultra theologists like my beloved 20th century Gilbert Keith Chesterton, Christ basic experience is that father, father, why have you abandoned me? Which is precisely an incredible intense experience of the separation from God, which is the way I see it unique. I can argue about this later, unique for Christianity. So I would nonetheless go a little bit further in this direction that our, uh, our religious experience, no matter how intensely personal is, it is, it's historically formed. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.